We often think about him when we sit down together at the table and he's not there. If there's food left over, so used am I to cooking for a specific number of people that I still do it. If there's food left over, I immediately think about my husband, understanding that he can't eat this sort of home-cooked food behind the prison walls. My name is Lilia Smailova. I'm the wife of political prisoner Adam Smailov, who was taken away on May 21, 2018. He's been in prison for nearly a year and a half. The investigation into his case ended in the summer, and my husband, like his entire group, eight people, was sent to Rostov. That's why my husband is currently in Rostov in Russia. Unfortunately, things turned out that I did not receive. I didn't get the opportunity to officially receive permission to see my husband. My older daughters got to go to court. These two or three hearings that were open to the public, we got the opportunity to see him. They managed to see their father, and I managed to see my husband. While my younger daughter, as she was a minor then, and they don't allow minors into courts, was not allowed to attend the court hearings. That's why, unfortunately, my child hasn't seen her father for a year and a half already. It's been very hard to live this year without my husband. We were so used to him, he's the person who always supported us. It was very hard to read his letters. His letter was a message to us, to our family. He told us about the time he was transferred, that it was a very difficult process, physically and mentally. The transport that was used to transfer them from Simferopol just had these boxes of 40 by 60 centimeters, and he could only sit in it. If he tried to stand up, his head would bend the ceiling. It was very difficult to write for several hours. From Simferopol, they were first taken to Krasnodar, and during that time, they were only allowed to go outside twice, for five minutes each time, to use the restroom. They were not allowed to pray, explaining it with the fact that there is no time to wait for them. When he was put into prison, he described all of this in his letter. The first thing he noticed was the food they were given, white bread. When he was in Simferopol, he described the bread that they were given, if you would take it into your hands and squeeze it, then it would transform into duff. He had started really missing white bread after a year and a half. He was alone in his cell, and the cell was the size that only allowed him to take two steps. My husband is facing 10 to 20 years imprisonment. Prior to his arrest, my husband was the chairman of a religious organization. He also participated in Muslim burial rituals. He also helped the needy. He also looked after a lonely old woman at her relative's request who was bedridden, even though his own bedridden grandmother lived in our house, and he would help me care for her as well. Prior to his arrest, I saw how the searches were being carried out, how the trials went, but I can say that my attention to the process was only as a bystander, that is, from the moment of his arrest, everything changed. That's how I ended up in the same situation that other Muslims were in, and their wives. And that's how I acquired, either fortunately or unfortunately, a large family where I saw enormous support for myself. Seeing as this year was the year of our court hearings, the constant travels just so we could be heard, so that they could hear that our husbands, not just mine, but everyone's husbands, who are still imprisoned, that they are being charged unjustly. All the charges are utterly baseless. We're all, in principle, Ukrainian citizens. That's why we want the government to pay attention to the problems that we face when we are in the territory of the Russian Federation at the moment.